River Parkland. Mr. Speaker, we have asked many times for this government to confirm if they will disclose the evidence that justified the invocation of the Emergencies Act. Every single time, they have refused. If the government has the evidence to support their extraordinary actions, they should be pleased to take the opportunity to table it in this House today. Canadians are increasingly wondering whether this Liberal government even had the evidence at all. Can the Minister of Public Safety confirm whether the evidence exists, yes or no? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the short answer is yes, the evidence exists. Um, where was my honourable colleague last January and February when businesses were shut, when people were laid off, when our borders were closed, when outside this chamber, Mr. Speaker, Ottawans were held hostage in their own homes? We debated those facts in this House. I remember my honourable colleague and I having an exchange during the debate of the invocation of the Emergencies Act, and it was only after police told us that they needed this special power to ensure that they could restore public safety. We're going to cooperate with the inquiry so there's transparency so that we can make sure that this never happens again. The Honourable Member for Sturgeon River Parkland. I guess I'll take that as a no, Mr. Speaker. Appointing a commissioner to lead the inquiry into the government's unprecedented use of the Emergencies Act must be a process that is completely transparent. Parliament was in no way consulted by this Liberal government on the appointment of Justice Rouleau. For an inquiry as important as this, Canadians deserve to know how and why the government determined that Justice Rouleau was the appropriate candidate. What was the process? What qualifications were required? How many candidates were considered? Will the government reveal this information, yes or no? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, my honourable colleague wants transparency. I would encourage him to bold, highlight and underline the word public in the expression public inquiry, Mr. Speaker. Um, Justice Rouleau has a plethora of experience in both trial law as well as appellate law. He's familiar, familiar with the principles of, 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 of ensuring that there is a balance between cabinet confidences and making sure that he has the information that he needs to review so that we can be sure we got it right with regards to the Emergencies Act, Mr. Speaker, so that we can be sure that there are lessons taken away from this awful episode. And it would be nice to see the Conservatives appreciate just how severe this event was. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Charlebourg, Haute Saint Charles. Mr. Speaker, when this government declared a state of emergency, at that time all of the blockades had already been removed by local police, except here in Ottawa. It would be a lie to say that this emergency measure was necessary. Just like in other parts of the country, the blockades were easily removed by local forces. But to try to justify his actions, the Prime Minister decided to consult the provinces. But provincial premiers also did not feel that it was necessary to invoke the emergency legislation. So why consult the provinces if he never intended to listen to them? The Honourable Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, when the illegal blockades closed the borders, businesses, and caused employee layoffs, Canadians were the ones who paid the highest price. Only after hearing the opinion of police forces did we decide to invoke the Emergencies Act? It was necessary and it worked. We have launched an independent, rev an independent review with Justice Rouleau as Commissioner. We are looking forward to working with the investigation to promote transparency. Thank you. The Honourable Member. Mr. Speaker, it is clear that this Liberal government is being dishonest because ultimately the Rouleau Commission will investigate the police forces, but not the Liberal government. We already know what the results will be. The demonstrators are bad, the police is bad, but the Liberal government is perfect. Just like with the other scandals, this time the police forces are going to be thrown under the bus. Why? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker. Fact. Fact. During the blockades, there was a great deal of disruption to the economy. Fact. During the illegal blockades, there was a great deal of disruption to the borders. In fact, it was only after we received, only after we received the opinion of police forces did we invoke the Emergencies Act. It was the right decision, and we will be collaborating with the Commissioner. Thank you. For Medicine Hat, Carson Warner. Here's a fact, Speaker. This government's invocation of the Emergencies Act was a dark day in Canadian history. Legal experts and Canadians know that there is no need to invoke the Act as Canada's existing laws are sufficient. 
This government has since shown that they have no intentions of providing any justification for stripping away Canadians' charter rights. They just simply want us to trust them. Really? We don't trust them. That's the issue. How can this government possibly believe that Canadians actually trust them? <laughs> Minister of Public Safety. Mr. Speaker, because on this side, we spoke to Canadians. We spoke to Canadians during the blockades, and their experiences were their businesses were shut down, workers were... We did make it to question number 14 without too much of a uproar. Uh, the Honourable Minister of Public Safety. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, as I was saying before I was um, unfortunately interrupted by my colleagues, we spoke with Canadians during the illegal blockades. We spoke with the people that live outside of these chambers, who were held hostage, who couldn't go to work, whose families couldn't take their children to school, whose seniors couldn't get public access to public transportation because of the illegal occupation. It was the police who laid charges, Mr. Speaker, independently because of those interruptions. And it was only after we received their advice that we invoked the Emergencies Act and we had to. 